Hello and welcome to Study IQ. I am your friend Rahul Saigaonkar. I hope you are all in good spirits today. We are going to discuss Indo-Japanese relationship today. Recently, we know that Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi hosted the Japanese counterpart Fumio Kishida. Japanese PM Fumio Kishida was on a two-day visit to India on March 19th and March 20th, 2022. He visited India. This was the 14th Indo-Japan annual summit. So in this discussion, we'll understand what happened between India and Japan. What were the announcements? The discussion here would revolve around the joint statement that was released by both the prime ministers. But before all these things, we'll talk about the Indo-Japanese relations in general. What has been the background of India and Japan? From what time have there been diplomatic relations between India and Japan? How they have transformed because 21st century has seen an upswing in India and Japan relationship. What, is, what are the reasons behind that? Are there any complementarities between India and Japan? So we'll understand all these things first, then we'll jump into the bilateral talks and whatever decisions have come up. What is the investment that Japan is going to make in India? What are the focus areas for India and Japan going forward? All these things would be discussed in this video. So get ready for a long haul where we'll talk about India and Japan relationship. Let us begin the discussion. But if you're preparing for competitive exams like UPSC civil service examination or state PSC or any other examination, do visit our website studyiq.com. You can also download our app alternatively on Google Play Store. You'll get all the information here and do not forget to use the code Rahul33. Today is the last day of this particular offer. From tomorrow, it will not be available. If you use the code Rahul33 to buy any course across StudyIQ platform today, you'll first of all get 33% extra discount plus double validity. If a course was valid for six months or one year, that would be doubled directly. So do not forget to use this. Today is the last day of this particular sale. Right, let's begin our discussion. As I told you that the Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida was on an official visit to India on March 19th and March 20th, 2022. This was the 14th India-Japan annual summit where a, a Japanese Prime Minister visited India. There are alternate visits. In 2018, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi had visited Tokyo. He visited Japan and this time the new Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida is visiting India. In fact, uh, this was a very memorable visit. Why? Because this year, in 2022, it was the 70th anniversary of establishment of diplomatic relations between India and Japan. This is also the year of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, 75th anniversary of Indian independence. So it was very special for both the countries. In fact, as I told you, this was the visit in 2018, 13th Indo-Japan annual summit had happened. After that, the COVID-19 stuck in 2020, 2021, there were no summits and eventually in 2022, the 14th summit is continuing. And this is the official book from the Ministry of External Affairs. There was a small error also with respect to the name Narendra Modi, his uh, India-Japan annual summit. You can go to the website of Ministry of External Affairs where you can see this book, uh, what were the features of uh, Indo-Japan relationship from 2018, you can view here. But let us begin our talk and understand about the background of relations. How exactly the relations between India and Japan have evolved. Now, if we talk about the two nations, Japan was one of the Axis powers. In 1945, it was devastated. So it was a country which was looking to rebuild. India got independence around the same time in 1947 and the diplomatic ties between the two countries, they began in 1952. Japan and India signed a peace treaty where they established diplomatic relations between both the countries. So that is why this time it was the 70th anniversary of the diplomatic ties which began. But whenever we talk about Japan, we need to understand that Japan is a very core ally of United States of America. So from 1952 to 2000, if you have to understand the relations between India and Japan, they simply followed the Indo-US relationship. And we know that Indo-US relationship was quite strained from 1950s to the 21st century. Why? Because India was more or less, although India from a principal viewpoint, we were non-aligned. But in reality, we were swayed towards USSR from 1971 itself. And that is why our relationship with USA was not very cordial. And very similarly, the relationship with Japan was not cordial. But after 1991, the relationship started to transform, which is quite true with all the countries. 
But you need to remember that Japan was growing and Japan provided the official development assistance to India from 1950s itself. If I'm not wrong, from 1958, Japan has been providing official development assistance to India. But 21st century saw an upswing between India and Japan. Why? There was a reset. In year 2000, there was a reset of relationship after Mori Yeshiro visited India. But before that, something else had happened which had brought Japan and India apart. What was the incident? In 1998, India had tested a nuclear weapon in Pokhara. And we know the history of uh, atom bomb in Nagasaki and Hiroshima in Japan. So Japan are completely averse of nuclear testing and nuclear weapons because of which Indo-Japan relations were strained. But in 2000, they were reset. And from that time, we have been looking at a continuous upswing. In 2005 itself, we set up that we will have annual summit meetings. And in 2018, till 2018, I can say it was continuous till 2018, it was the 13th meeting. But uh, 2020, 2021, there were no meetings. And eventually in 2022, there was a 14th meeting now. In the year 2011, a SEPA was finalized, Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement between India and Japan. In this year's summit or this bilateral talk, there has been an amendment or a protocol to SEPA also. In 2014, Shinzo Abe was the chief guest to Republic Day celebrations of India. That very same year, we raised our strategic partnership to special strategic global partnership with Japan. In fact, that the same year, Japan had pledged 3.5 trillion yen to India as investment, which has been completed by 2019. And I told you in 2018, it was 13th Indo-Japan Annual Summit where Prime Minister Modi visited Tokyo. And the very next year from November 2019, we started a 2 plus 2 dialogue. That means Finance Ministry and the Defence Ministry from both the parties would also meet. So what have we understood from this particular discussion? That before year 2000 or before year 1998, 1998 was the year of Nadal for both India and Japan relationship. But from 21st century, there has been an upswing in relationship between India and Japan, which is quite true for many other countries. But India and Japan relationship has been very, very special. It has been growing at immense rate. There are many Japanese companies which are in India, which are working in India. And there is a lot of complementarity because of which there is an upswing continuously. What is the complementarity? See, when you look at Japan, what does Japan has? What is the speciality of Japan? See, first of all, Japan has money. Of course, Japanese economy was very predominant. At one point of time in 1980s, Japan were a challenger to United States of America in terms of money. So Japan has money. Yes. Then Japan has technology. True. Japanese technology is very well known. Japanese products are world quality. Right? They're world class products. And Japan's problem is their population. Right? And again, a, a common factor, we can say that they have a problem with China. If you look at all these four things, India and Japan have complementarity. Yes, India and China have problems. Japan and China have problems over the Senkaku Islands. Japan has money. India is deficit of money. India wants investment. Japan has technology. India lacks technology, although in the last decade or so we have been improving. But still, we are looking for technological partners. Japan is providing that. The biggest complementarity between India and Japan is with respect to population. See, Japanese population is declining or I can say Japanese population is aged population. When we talk about India, India is a young flourishing population. India has, India has the power of demography behind it. We have workers, we, have, we simply need to skill them. So we have huge population, huge market. Japan lacks that. So there is a lot of complementarity between the two countries because of which the relationship has been going continuously in upswing. And if we look at some of the fun facts of India and Japan, we have we have centers for promotion of Japanese language education in India. There is India Japan Science Technology Academic Cooperation from Indian side. India Japan Disaster Risk Reduction Cooperation. India Japan Security and Defense Cooperation. There is agreement with respect to agriculture, food processing, fisheries. There is also India Japan skill development program. Apart from that, there is also India Japan development cooperation with respect to Africa, 
at at the world level india japan cooperation act for east forum there is oda cooperation official development assistance cooperation from japan which comes into india there is india japan railway cooperation make in india cooperation there is a digital partnership between india and japan so there is a long list of cooperative things between india and japan and i told you why because there is a lot of complementarity between the two countries and now the japanese prime minister fumio kishida he visited india in march 2022 and a joint statement was released by both the prime ministers that is fumio kishida and narendra modi they released a joint statement now we are going to talk about this joint statement and we'll see what were the focus areas and where is india japan relationship headed let's talk about this the first aspect was trade now both the parties first of all uh, they they mentioned that uh, It, it is quite satisfactory thing that is going on because earlier the Japanese investors they had a huge problem with India, especially because of the red tapeism in India. But now the Indians have laid the red carpet for Japanese investment, and the target for both the countries has been enhanced. Forty-two billion dollar is the trade target for both the countries. We hope that they achieve. But as I told you in two thousand fourteen, Japanese government at that time the Prime Minister Shinzo Abe he had announced. Japanese yen 3.5 trillion investment in India in the next five years and by 2019 this target was already achieved. So both the nations they expressed satisfaction that this target was achieved and now the Japanese have pledged again another five trillion yen investment in India which amounts to approximately 3.2 lakh crore. That means five billion dollars approximately, right? So they will be financing India's. public projects as well as private projects so in the next 5 years what can we anticipate huge amount of funds from the japanese apart from that of course the focus of the joint statement focus of both the prime ministers was on our indo pacific and the quad because both the parties both the parties of both the nations are a part and parcel of quad and they have stakes in indo pacific and this was a clear cut indication towards china without mentioning china it was an indication towards the chinese both the prime ministers emphasized that they would love to have open and free indo pacific and india and japan would increase their efforts to ensure that there is free and open indo pacific in fact japanese prime minister kishida invited prime minister modi to quad summit meeting in tokyo later apart from that the japanese prime minister welcomed india indo pacific oceans initiative which was launched in 2019 he said that ipoi and the foip can work together foip is free and open indo pacific initiative apart from that both the nations they reiterated their strong support to the asean unity and centrality and they supported asean outlook for indo pacific clearly there was a long mention of indo pacific and cooperation at quad level there was a mention of quad vaccine partnership the vaccine maitri initiative of india for all these things japan has supported and most of the things were directed towards china because in indo pacific we do understand that there is aggression of china to some extent apart from indo pacific there was a focus on some specific countries in the joint statement they mentioned north korea and both the prime ministers condemned north korea's ballistic missile launches they also mentioned the development in myanmar we know in myanmar last year in february there was a military coup in myanmar and the situation is deteriorating there has been violation of human rights and both the prime ministers were concerned about situation in myanmar and hoped that there would be return of democracy there apart from that there was also a mention of afghanistan we know in afghanistan there is right now the rule of taliban both prime ministers mentioned the united nations security council resolution 2593 which was brought in 2021 where it was suggested that the afghanistan land should not be used to shelter terrorist activities apart from that it was quite obvious that there would be a mention of ukraine which is right now the conflict zone both nations hope that the conflict would be resolved the humanitarian crisis would be averted and a ceasefire would come very soon they also spoke about how ukraine crisis might impact the indo pacific region also apart from this there were six memorandum of cooperation or memorandum of understanding signed 
between India and Japan, there has been a memorandum of cooperation signed over cyber security, a MOU on seven JICA loans, that is Japanese cooperation assistance, where 20, more than 20,000 crore worth projects would be sanctioned for water supply, for sewerage, for horticulture, healthcare, for biodiversity conservation in different states in India. Apart from that, we do know since 2011, there is a comprehensive economic partnership agreement between India and Japan. There has been an amendment to it with respect to the fish surimi products. In SEPA, now there, has, there will be a protocol where fish surimi product of India with a non-originating additive would be considered that they are originating from India or originating good from India. So remember, fish surimi product would be a protocol in the SEPA. Apart from that, there would be a memorandum of cooperation on decentralized domestic waste management, waste water management, where the famous Japanese Jokasu technology would now be provided to India over the waste water management technology. Apart from that, there would be a memorandum of cooperation on India-Japan industrial competitiveness partnership. And there was another memorandum of cooperation on sustainable urban development. Now, I want one of the viewers to do something. I want you to comment on this particular video and tell us about the Jokasu technology because since we are discussing Indo-Japan relationship, we will not get into this. But just let us know in the comment section what is this technology so that everyone learns from that. Now, apart from this, there was also focus on security. Both the nations, they mentioned that in 2019, in November, first 2 plus 2 meeting was held. After that, there has been no meeting and both the countries have now agreed that it will happen at the earliest opportunity in Tokyo. Both countries also mentioned that they will continue their bilateral security arrangements. There are, there are multiple exercises which Indo, India and Japan conduct. One is Dharma Guardian, the Malabar exercise with United States and Japan. Australia has also been included this time. In fact, this year in the exercise Milan, Japan was also participating. So all these things were also mentioned. Now, apart from that, climate change was one of the areas where both the countries have announced many things. Of course, both the countries, they welcome the launch of Indo-Japan Clean Energy Partnership. There is already a joint crediting mechanism. We know from the Kyoto Protocol, the carbon credits are transferred from one country to another country. And we have an understanding with Japan over the joint crediting mechanism. And this will continue. Apart from that, the Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida has welcomed India's contribution to the International Solar Alliance and also to the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure. Japan would now be joining a very, very important pointer. Japan would now be joining India Swedish climate initiative called LEAD IT. So please remember what is LEAD IT? LEAD IT is India and Swedish climate initiative which will promote the transition of heavy industry. That means cleaner technology in heavy industries. Please remember this, lead IT. Apart from that, I told you about a memorandum of cooperation on the sustainable urban development. Apart from this, there was also finally a mention of technology. Of course, Japan is known for its technology. Now, India and Japan are further going to cooperate in the fields of 5G, in the fields of open RAN, that is the radio access network, telecom network security, submarine cable systems, and in the quantum communications also. Both the Prime Ministers welcomed the 10th meeting of Indo-Japan Joint Committee on Science and Technology in November 2020 and both the countries are looking forward for a joint lunar research project also. So there would be more and more collaboration between India and Japan over technology. So that, that, this is what we can forecast that India and Japan relations are moving towards another upswing in the next five years. A huge investment of 5 trillion yen is coming into India. A lot of technological announcements are also bound to come between India and Japan. From security perspective, Indo-Pacific is a region of focus because both of them have a common adversary that is China. Apart from that, many memorandum of understanding and memorandum of cooperation have also been signed. Whenever there is an update on any of these things, we'll talk again on Study IQ. But that is it right now where we spoke about the 14th Indo-Japan Annual Summit. Thank you for watching this video. Jai Hind.